the two biggest forms of cooperation that dementia residents can give each other is befriending and encouraging. Encouraging to come to the workshops and the activities. It's really important for dementia residents to be engaged in these daily activities because they need a good two to three hours of good quality cognition to be able to get away from that dementia stress. The mind otherwise will run riot with anxiety and stress unless the thinking is redirected to a good quality focus and concentration through activities like crosswords and quizzes and word games and reading etc. Unless these activities are applied then the person with dementia will just have a mind that's full of dementia stress, full of anxiety and just spinning all day long. Whereas if they can redirect that thinking through focus and concentration on activities they enjoy, then they're going to be relieved of that anxious state. The thing, of course, is that you need to have activities that appeal to the person. The person is not going to make that effort to think in a different way. They're not going to make that effort to think and focus and concentrate unless it's really interesting. So that's why the diversional therapist or the activity coordinator has to work very hard to make sure that these activities are of interest and garner the group focus. And not just sitting there passively, you know, half listening. It actually has to be proper cognition and engagement. They need to be able to tune in to what the person is saying and be able to make comment back. They need to absorb it. It's not a passive listening, but absorbing and assimilating and applying. And the group will pick up whether you're making an effort with that. I mean, certainly just your focus, your gaze, your attention, your, you know, the smile on your face, your, your whole engagement will be very apparent if you're just sitting back and rolling your eyes or half falling asleep. Dementia residents in the group don't like that. They'll dig you in the ribs and tell you to wake up and focus and concentrate. Everyone has to make an effort. And it does take time. And it, you know, and it is, is an effort. The, the dementia residents often say, you know, we're trying hard, we're doing our best, it's difficult. And sometimes they say it's too hard. Because if you've got a mind that's racing with stress, and negativity, and anxiety, and dementia blanks, and disorientation, and memory loss, and all the other things, so many things going on with dementia, it takes a lot to be able to redirect your thinking away from that, and focus and concentrate through the intellect on the activities at hand. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of willpower, but once garnered, then it can be harnessed for quite some time, hours even, and the relief and the respite that the dementia residents get with this good quality thinking is such a tremendous experience for them. And of course then they're motivated to keep thinking in that way because thinking in a clear, positive way is so much nicer than thinking in a stressed, spinning, anxious sort of a way. So they encourage each other with that and at the workshops, of course, they want to keep in that positive frame of mind because they know how quickly they can just flick back into the dementia spin unless they're really disciplined with their thinking. And it is a group effort. It really can only be done in a group because one-on-one, -on -one, really, it would take eight hours a week working with someone to get the level of cognition and quality input required that a group can harness. It's much, much easier in a group because if you've got, say, eight people in a group and you're working for, as with activities, four or five hours a day, that's a lot of time. And the residents inspire each other. They really do. They encourage each other. They inspire each other. If one resident sees that the you know, another resident who may be a friend of hers, who she sees every day at the dining table, breakfast, lunch and dinner, who hasn't been talking for months. And then quietly, she starts to say something, you know, like, that was nice, or 
it was a good workshop or whatever, then others will start to listen and see, especially those residents who haven't been communicating, who then start to communicate even with a word or two, that is the big eureka moment. And others that are quiet and withdrawn in their dementia cave will start to make an effort, build up the confidence seeing the other person come out of you know, their silent situation and have the courage to say something and hopefully say the right thing. But if they can see they're being encouraged that the group, oh, you know, it was lovely that, to have you speaking and, you know, that was lovely what you said about the sunshine or the weather or that it was lovely or whatever, others then will definitely start coming out much more quickly than just if there's one dementia resident who's, you know, the confident one speaking most of the time. So you need the group. If you were to do this one-on-one -on -one with one dementia resident, yeah, hours, really eight hours a week, a good eight hours a week is needed. It's too much. It really needs to be done in a group. And of course, the other thing is that the person has to have the will and the wish to make the effort. You can't do it for them. You can't push the thoughts in. They have to make that internal effort to think and engage and be interested and be involved. They've got to want to do it. And most re dementia residents do want to do it if they possibly can, because they don't want to be, you know, carried along by dementia stress for the rest of their life. It's like a burden. They'd much rather think in a positive, clear, interesting, focused way than have spinning thoughts or dementia blanks. So most people will make the effort but there are those that don't. Um, very shy people find it very difficult to come into the group, really, uh, especially when you're older and maybe you've been quite quiet all your life. You haven't really mixed with people much. Maybe you've had a family, but you've never really been that social and spent most of your time in the kitchen and the garden rather than sitting around talking at the dinner table. Then you haven't either got the interest or the skills often to be able to talk to a group. I mean, you may be fine talking to one or two people, but within a group, it can be quite intimidating or you may well just not like it. So these people can spend a lot of time in their rooms. And as a result of that, they get more anxious and more isolated and it becomes more difficult for them to come out into the group and partake. That's why it's really good to encourage the group activity from the beginning so that the person doesn't get this habit of just lying on their bed in their room, isolated and anxious, because then it can be really quite difficult to break. So all of these topics are in these two books, The Resident's Voice and The Resident's Rise, which I've written, both from a dementia unit. All the experiences of the dementia residents and all these positive practical techniques of how to help people in dementia units is written in the back epilogues of both books. So thank you so much for your looks and your likes and your comments. Just to let you know, on TikTok, I'm also doing a series of videos on Granny, who's a characterization of an elderly woman with Alzheimer's in a dementia unit and practical um, aspects are gone through with her stories. The theory is not there, like as with these videos, I'm going through all the depth and detail of each aspect, but at least with Granny on TikTok, the practical application is there if any of you are interested in that or passing it on to grandchildren or friends or family. So thank you for your likes and your looks and viewing and comments. Thanks.